welcome to episode 37 of the Backstage Knits podcast. My name is Catherine. You can find me on my blog at BackstageKnits.com. I'm also on Ravelry as Backstage Cat Knits and Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok as Backstage Cat. Uh, this is a video podcast all about knitting, various other crafty pursuits, and hopefully and eventually the theater that I do, hence the backstage portion of my name. I'm so glad to have you all here today. Uh, thanks for spending some of your day with me. Um, I think this will be a decently quick one. I've got a lot of whips, but I'm not going to talk too much about any foes, and I have no real stash acquisition. So um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be relatively quick, but I found that I like doing this whole video podcasting thing. Um, you know, it's been more than a month since I did the last podcast, but I did Vlogmas in that time. So hopefully you all saw that and enjoyed it. I really enjoyed taking you along on my life with me, although it was a little bit um, of a lot <laughs> in terms of like, filming and remembering to edit it and putting it all together. So it's not something I want to do consistently, but I really like this whole podcast situation. So I figured I'd hop on today and talk about some yarn. Um, I'm also trying something different with how I record this. Um, I'm recording it to my phone, but screencasting it to my computer so I can see it um, and use the back facing phone. So if like things go in weird directions, that's why, because it's oddly mirrored image. Um, so bear with me while I fuss with this setup and try to get like the best quality for all of you. Um, let's see, these are my notes, which like the other thing about this is I'm not like on top of my desk. So I uh, wanted to grab my little notes, which I found to be incredibly helpful when doing podcasts. Um, so yes, in the last month, since I've done one of these videos, I've done a lot of knitting, but almost all of it was on what you see here. This is the Semba Suchil top by Magali McDonald, and I'm not going to talk too much about it because the pattern's not being released until probably the fall. Um, it was kind of inspired by uh, Dide Mortos, um, that Semba Suchil flower is like the orange marigold um, that you see um, in Mexican culture and so I think it's going to be released in the fall sort of in preparation for that so I'll definitely talk more about this on the podcast or the blog um, as the release as the release date gets closer or once it's been released um, but just kind of wanted to show it off a little bit um, since I did finish it and I can't remember if I talked about it I, I don't think I had the yarn um, for the last time I podcasted so a, a to look, a top appeared. Um, so I'll keep it on so you can all admire it. Uh, it's really, really cozy. I love the texture, but more to come about how it's made and what I made it out of and details in a future episode. See, now I've got to do future episodes so I can talk about this top. So I have no other finished objects to share. Like I said, basically all of this knitting um, was done in December. I knit two little like fridge magnets for Christmas gifts for people, um, but they have been gifted to their recipients. If you'd like to see photos of those, check out the blog. So whips, I'm in an interesting spot right now where I'm working on a test knit, but the deadline is pretty long and the stitches are a little bit less, so I don't have to work on it every day like I did on this one. Now, on this one, I didn't have to. The deadline has been moved a couple times. Um, I think it's now the end of this month, um, but I just really wanted to get it off the needles in 2021 and start the new year fresh and to be able to focus on my new test knit that I'm working on. The due date for that though is in March. And um, so there's not, like I don't have to do a lot per day. Um, and so I've actually been working on lots of other things, which has been, really really cool um i you know in december i was a very monogamous knitter and so now it's nice to try some different things out and do some different things so i am working a little bit each day on that test knit um, because i plug everything into excel i know what i need to work on to finish my sweater by a certain time that does change a little bit it's always sometimes hard to predict like how many stitches you need on a body, for example, if it's not a pattern repeat, right? Which this isn't, it's just a stockinette um, of a top. 
and so you know I can go off the gauge but sometimes if my gauge is a little bit off or I decide that like hey I haven't used very much yarn um let me make it a little bit longer or just like comfort level you know I, I want it to be a little bit longer um so sometimes that changes but right now to finish by the end of february i only need to knit like less than a thousand stitches per day i think it's like 990 um so i've been meeting that goal every day and then i give myself time to work on other things which is really really great um like i said to to try different things out and have stuff to share with you all and with the blog I feel like that's been an entire Ron sentence for almost six minutes, so I apologize. It's been a while since I've done this whole, like, talking to the camera thing. So yeah, let's show off what I've actually been working on. Um, the test knit is secret. I, I mean, I, I think I'll tell you it's a, like, top elbow length sleeves, um, color work on the yoke, um, and I'll show off the yarn I'm working on, but other than that, I'm not going to show you because it's a secret. So I'm making this out of Cascade, no, not Cascade, Cloudborn Highland Sport Weight, um, which is the same yarn I made my Princess Fiona Rhinebeck sweater out of. And that's kind of why I chose to do it with this yarn, um, because I had one skein of this left over. Um, and this is the Plum Heather colorway. So I was able to just like, well, I need to let me do coordinating color work tops. So the body is going to be this color. It's Shaley Heather. Um, and then it will, the color work will be the Plum Heather, the Majestic Purple, and the uh, Lavender Heather. Yeah, Lavender Heather. So this really cool, like, neutral gradient I haven't quite decided which color is going to be which on the color work top, but I'll get there when I get there. And I think it will look really cool with like this, whoops, there goes one, brownish, grayish, shaley Heather. Um, and it's funny, I was looking the other night, um, I had made a trip to Webb's. I made a trip to Webb's actually like two days before Rhinebeck, which is kind of dumb, but it was on my way to something and I was going to be early for the other something so um i end up getting yarn for a see i didn't plan top of this i don't know what it's called it's uh it's like monarch or something it has a swallowtail sweater maybe by knitosophy okay so i'll talk about it when i actually knit it but um it has like this really cool butterfly color work up here um and i realized the other night that i actually got the same color in the fingering weight for like the body of that sweater the same kind of thing color work yoke and then you know sleeves and body a solid color so um eventually i'll probably have two sweaters that look pretty similar but the, the yoke for that one is like a teal and blue and, and black um so it'll be different but it's a really nice color like it's it's gray, I guess, but it's also kind of brownie. Um, so I really like it. Just like a nice neutral that I think will go with a lot. So anyway, that's that. Like I said, um, trying to work on that a little bit each day, meet my stitch goal, and then move on to other things. Um, so the next other thing is a new pair of socks for me. Um, you know, now that I've been going into work a little bit, um, I like to have a pair of socks on the go. And I am trying to work through my, um, I think I showed it in one of my recent podcasts, Farmer's Daughter Fiber Sock Squad from 2021. So I'm working on the Pebbles and Pathways socks by Marceline Smith, who um, is a fellow podcaster. Her name is uh, Hey Brown Berry here on YouTube. You should definitely check her out. Um, I was watching her most recent episode this morning, actually. Um, and so it's like this really cool... Sorry, the one downside of this is I can't really see when I hold it up to the camera. Okay, so um, it's this really cool like garter stitch middle with the cables on the side. So um, I've just started this. I've done like one in a little bit of a pattern repeat. Um, and I'm knitting this out of Farmer's Daughter Fiber Sock Squad. This is the um, Pin... Pinter? I'm not quite sure how to say that word. Pinter. 
sock, um, which is the 7525 Super Rush Merino Nylon. Um, and this is the colorway. The combo is a New Dawn, um, which was the January colorway from last year. So it's this pretty solid orange, a uh, little flecks of like a pink and a deeper orange, but like very subtle and this cool like fuchsia. So they look really nice together. Um, I'm gonna do a toe up heel and gusset, though probably not the one in the pattern because um, I really like the one that I've made a couple times um, from the Fine and Dandy socks by Jessica Gore. Um, I've used that on a, a couple of different socks um, and I like how it fits me. So I'll probably go with that. The next project I'm working on is a Blogville Knit Along hosted by my friend Sarah over at Mildly Granola. Um, and she started this, it's like a very casual, let's knit this Vertices United by 2032. So it's Vertices Unite um, by Stephen West. And I was really happy because I was able to pull everything from Stash. And I'm really, really liking how all the colors came together and I think it'll be so, so cool. So this is where I am so far. I've worked on this just a little bit. Um, you start with colors A and B and kind of go from there. So um, let's show off what I'm doing. Color A is more of that Pinolter sock. Um, this was from the sock squad, so it had a coordinating mini, but I won't use it. This is Lone Larch, which might have been like April or May. Um, I wasn't good when I got them about writing down <laughs> which was which. So it's a white yarn with like pops of navy and teal and lime green. And then color B is Forest Fiber Arts. Um, and I didn't write down the base of this. Oh boy, give me one sec because it's in here. Um, this is their 8024 ply sock. And this is the colorway Oasis. And mom, if you're watching, this is the yarn you bought for me when we were at that yarn store in West, no, not West, but wherever we were at the beach, we went to a yarn store this summer and you bought this yarn for me. So thank you. It's really cool. Um, it's like teals with the, um, lime green and pop of navies and hot pink. So it looks really cool striped with, um, that Lone Large. And then color C, which... I don't think has a pop of its own um, and it's just like striped with other things is some leftovers. Um, I made my blush and grow bl blush and glow crop top um, earlier in 2020 um, I think <laughs> what is time um, but I faded it so this was one of the colors of the fades. This is hedgehog fiber sock in the juniper colorway. So a gray with pops of navy and orange. Um, I think it'll look really cool with all of these because of that navy color. Color D has a pop by itself and then it's striped and then I think it's the border or maybe it doesn't have a pop. I, I can't, I wrote it all down but I can't keep track when I was choosing yarns. So this is actually a single ply. Um, this is Malabrigo Makita in the atomic colorway. I use this for my, um, Oh my god, a uh, gold, golden horizon, yeah, golden horizon sweater by Tina Say. Um, this was the contrast stripe color, so it's just this like riotous speckle, but it kind of reads pink uh, and navy from far away. So again, I think it'll look really, really nice with all of these. Oh boy, oh boy, oh, I'm wreaking havoc over here. And then there is a fifth color, uh, um, and the fifth color just is a pop by itself in like kind of a parallelogram. It doesn't stripe with any of the co other colors. So I chose this, um, which is Yarn Huga in, I think it's like there's light sport heavy fingering base. Um, so it is a little bit heavier than all these other yarns, but since it's that one pop, I figured it would be okay. And this is the colorway Cosmic Dawn. I got this at Rhinebeck. Um, and so I think, again, it picks up that pink and that blue from like, especially this one, they look really cool together. So, um, I just think it's going to look so, so cool. I was so happy to like have stash and like I calculated it all out and how much of each thing do I need and like weighed my leftovers. Um, so I was just really happy to like utilize my stash and use up some leftovers. And I think it'll be really gorgeous and like riotously colorful, but in like, a well-coordinated way. 
And there are plenty of other uh, Blanco people knitting along, which is super fun and exciting. I love knit alongs. So not really knit along, but um, when we were at Ryan Beck, my friend Leah got this same yarn and another yarn of the same because we are the same person <laughs> and we are at knitting club this morning a few minutes ago and she is knitting this yarn up into a Stephen West shawl as well um she's knitting doodler um with this as the main color so of course she is because we are the same person um it's hilarious and great and I'm just really happy about it because yay knitting friends <laughs> and yeah no we did not plan that um it just so happened, but but it's great. My final work in progress is my sock yarn blanket. So I can't, I, I mean, I've shown this off on the podcast, I think in like 2016 when I started it. Um, but I don't know that I showed it off in any of my recent ones. I, I meant to watch it back before I recorded this, but I forgot, so here we are. Um, so you've seen these, there's a couple of different <laughs> patterns for it. Um, I'm doing like the mitered square in a square. There's one that like gets you like where the edges are out. I'm not explaining it well. And I decided I wanted to make this in four quadrants that are 10 by 12 because um, the way I chose to do it is I do a central double decrease um, on the right side and then purl that on the wrong side. You can obviously knit it, but because I purl it, um, this line is pretty distinctive. And so I want all the lines to meet together, kind of like forming an X in the middle of a blanket. So that committed me to 480 squares. As you can see, I finished one quadrant. I finished that in like September or October maybe of 2021 oh, looks so good from far away i'm so excited about it um and i almost don't want to say this because i i'm kind of gonna jinx myself but i've knit a square every day on this so far in january um oops that's backwards so yeah i what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get to the 12 so that i can like take pictures and get a good um sense of scale and scope um but yeah i'm really excited about this so i'm just knitting away on it trying to do a square a day i realized that with 480 squares i started 2022 the year that we're in with 130 no 341 squares to go which when i saw that number i was like I, I could finish that in 2022 if I knit a square a day. Do I want to knit a square a day? Not really. Do I want this project to be done? Kind of. <laughs> I mean, I love it. It's going to be so awesome. And I like like the meditation of just like a, a simple square on the blanket. But I cast this thing around in 2016. And I've really been trying lately to like not have patterns on the needles forever um and like frog things if i'm not gonna make them because it just makes my brain space better to have not 20 projects on the needles like i did in 2020. um if you google if you go to my website and search hall of shame is the name of the blog post you can see um when i did like a big cleanup in summer 2020 and i've been basically working my way down since and now i only have I mean, these projects that you've seen today and only two long-standing works in progress, which honestly, if I don't touch them in 2022, they're gone. So they both got cast on in 2020. So, but I mean, this is like, I mean, each square is an hour. So we're already at 140 hours of work on this guy and I really like it. And I, I don't want to tear it out. And I, I can't really reuse those scraps of yarn for anything else. But at the same time, like I'm ready to have a blanket out of it. Um, and I've, I've kind of done the stupid thing of committing to 480 squares now, but I mean, at the end of the day, I know I'm going to be happier with that seamed configuration. So, um, yeah, I think a realistic goal for me is probably to get quadrants two and three done. Um, 
I mean, I don't, I, I don't even want to say just two. Like, I can definitely get just quadrant two done, right? Because I, you know, I have, I think, less than 100, definitely less than 100 to go on it, right? Um, so I, I kind of want to commit to quadrants two and three with the stretch goal of finishing the blanket in 2022. Um, but we'll see because I, I really, I, I don't want to be a square a day person. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I know myself and I know I'm bad at doing a thing every day. Um, that's never been sustainable for me in anything in life, really. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I kept it up. Today is the 8th and I put in the Square Knitting Club this morning. And so, you know, we'll see. We shall see. The other reason why I'm hesitant about committing to a square a day is, in theory, I am stage managing a show starting tomorrow that has rehearsal four times a week. I am cautious because Omicron, um, but also really, really excited to do it again and just really pleased and honored that they asked me to be their stage manager um because it's a group that i've not really worked with before um so just like pick me out of the blue it's not out of the blue but it's a long story so but to have picked me i'm really honored and i you know want to commit to it and i'm excited to do a show again um it's been a long time i mean i did that small one in september but like to actually be like i can't i have rehearsal um I mean, it's gonna be a lot like i have to work up the stamina to be out multiple nights during the week but Anyway, like, it is a very big time commitment. Um, you know, they're gonna try to do the show in March. And so like, we're moving quickly, we're gonna do runs in February. And so, you know, it's a lot of hours of rehearsal, which happy to do. But, you know, I, I can't commit to like, this week, I knit 3500 st stitches per day, which is great. And I mean, some of that was like, um, insomnia but um you know i feel like knitting a square a day an hour it's probably what i can commit to in knitting time on days i have rehearsal right and i mean i remember this from past shows like sometimes i'm just really brain dead now i probably won't be as much that i'm stage managing and not like actively doing the show because i have less stuff to like remember what to do and having to like practice right um so i actually like set with this in mind set my knitting goal in 2022 of like just 2000 stitches per day and not 2700 um which i might even like bump down if it feels like i'm not gonna do that all that being said i feel like realistically in the next three months I don't know that I can knit a square a day and also meet my test knitting goal, which will be my priority because I committed to that. Um, so that's why I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And I don't want to, and I don't know that I want to make up like three months worth of not knitting a square a day. Now it doesn't need to be a full square a day because it's 341 versus 365. So that's why I'm like, cautiously optimistic on quadrants two and three done in 2022 if i finish the sweater awesome i have no plans to commit to that i just don't think it's a realistic goal we'll see when i get all these things off the needles maybe all i want to do is just knit little squares all day long but i mean i like having more intense and exciting projects and like this is going to be gorgeous right but it's not exciting or intense which is fine like there's good knitting to not be exciting and intense that's why i like knitting it a lot because it's just easy i don't have to think about it i need a square in in an hour done you know um but if i only have an hour to knit i feel like sometimes i'm eventually i'm going to want to use that time sometimes for other things than just basic squares I also need to knit some fingering weight projects so I can have things to put in my squares. Although some awesome blog friends are sending me yarn. So if you're watching this and you are doing one of these, 
um, and you want some yarn scraps, I'm happy to do a swap. If you just want to offload, I'm not going to say no, but I don't want to ask for something for nothing. Um, so anyway, yes, scrappy blanket, lots of babble, the end. So yeah, I, I think that's it. Um, you know, like I said, lots of knitting happening. Um, I could talk more about them, but I think I'll call a day because I've been babbling for half an hour, most of which I feel like was one sentence because I haven't really stopped to breathe. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, that's my life right now, right? You know, it's still a pandemic and I'm very wary about doing the show. I'm not going to lie. Like, but at the same time, you know, I'm vaxxed and boosted. There's requirements for the cast to be vaxxed and I think boosted and I'm not in the show. So I can wear my mask the entire time. I can double mask. I don't know. I don't know. We're in a spot where like total abstinence is not sustainable now, two years in, total abstinence of like social activities. Um, you know, I don't need to go to work. Um, we're, I like going to the office, but I feel like if I want to do the show, I should further reduce other social activities. And even though there's really no one in the office it's like do I take the bus there um that's people but then driving is a hassle for me so yeah you know I I hesitate to even talk about this because I, I I I feel like doing this is not taking COVID seriously but like I am and I have been and I don't want you all internet people to like judge me but if you do that's fine because different people have different levels and so i don't know it's just such a weird time in which we live right now right like especially at this point in covid you know two years on like you know how much longer can we stop ourselves from doing the things we want to do but like we should do right? like i like i I know that's like an ableist thing to say. Anyway, I might cut this whole thing out. Um, this is like the most legit I've gotten on my podcast, I think, ever. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's that. You know, this is the world in which we live. And yeah, anyway, so more to come on that um more to come anyway yeah so let's end on a more exciting note i'm reading books again <laughs> a little bit um i'm uh did not plan to talk about this so i'm like not prepared but um I go in waves of reading, so I'll like read a lot and then not for like three months, but I'm, I'm a little bit back into reading. I'm reading The the Thousand Doors of January, or, or it's something like that with January and Doors. I'll put the actual title down here because I have forgotten, um, but it's really good. It's like the magical realism, um, which is definitely my jam, and I'm liking the narrator slash main character a lot, so um, it's been it's been good. Got that from my Libby library. Um, and yes, I have plenty of books, nope, this way, plenty of books to read. Most of these things on the shelf I have not read yet. So we'll get there when we get there. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, now that we've ended on a slightly more happier note, yay reading, um, time to end because it's been half an hour and I've been babbling. So thank you all for tuning in, for listening to my rambles about things yarny and things not. And I hope that wherever you are, you're having a wonderful, wonderful day and enjoying what you're crafting. I hope it's bringing you lots of joy. Until next time, bye. <laughs>